We are in Loch Ness, Scotland, and our goal today is to find the elusive Loch Ness Monster. The story of the Loch Ness Monster dates back to the 800s when a monk was sailing in these waters and he saw a creature in the water that was making big waves and approaching him and he held up the cross toward it to prevent it from coming in and then the creature disappeared. There's also another story where the monk, whose name was St. Columbo, like Columbo the research of the books. He was walking along these areas and he saw that people were helping a man and this man apparently had been mauled by a water beast in the area. So these were the first origins of the Loch Ness Monster story. In the 1800s there were multiple reports of sea serpents and they also found fossils of things they didn't quite know what it was which enhanced the story and existence of the Loch Ness Monster. In the 1930s, three fishermen were out here when they heard an angry noise coming from underneath the water and saw high waves coming towards them. This got reported into the papers, and this was the first time the word monster was used, giving it the nickname the Loch Ness Monster. Where does the name Loch Ness Monster come from? Well, this is actually the river Ness that flows through here. And in Scotland, they call Loch basically an arm of a lake or an arm of a river, so Loch Ness is how is what the name of this place is. Now the nickname for the Loch Ness Monster is Nessie, again from the river Ness, they call it Nessie. That's what the locals call her here, or him, maybe it's a him. In the 1930s, again, another businessman saw a creature with two humps that was about 20 feet long in these waters. Nessie was gaining so much attention that the journal Nature actually wrote and published several articles about her potential existence. Later in the 1930s, Rupert Gold came here and did a investigation where he interviewed eyewitnesses and did a report and he said that something exists here he not she's not sure what but something interesting does exist here as the legend grew the scotland official tourism board actually had to publicly say they did not make up the story of the loch ness monster to encourage tourism that they're giving more credence to potentially it could be a real thing it's now time to go see if we can find the loch ness monster or nessie if you want to be more pleasant with it you think we'll find Nessie today? No. Why? I think it's just a lot of people see what they want to see. So we're gonna find out, I guess. Hopefully, I'll be proven wrong. Are we gonna see Nessie today? Thank you, Asha. Yes, yeah, she's having a breakfast just now, though. <laughs> Getting a porridge outside. Okay. Scottish scholars have even found strange looking aquatic creatures carved into stones dated around 500 AD here in the Loch Ness area. On May 2nd, 1933, a couple reportedly saw a large animal rolling around near the surface. London newspapers even sent correspondents to Loch Ness giving a 20,000 pound reward for capturing Nessie. The Daily Mail even hired a big game hunter to come and try to capture Nessie here. That hunter found large footprints of a four legged animal and the Daily Mail printed monster of Loch Ness is not legend but a fact and very recently a person who was sailing here took out their drone filmed drone footage here later posted it and saw in the image a giant animal monster twice the size of their boat in the water and he was a skeptic but he even said there was something there I'm not sure what but there's something there take a look Scotland, there's something called the Conservation Wild Creatures Protection Act, and some people wanted the Loch Ness Monster to be protected under the act. But the problem was they didn't have evidence of his existence. So they used some photographs that they thought could be it, and they actually gave it an official name so it could be protected. Later on, researchers came here and they took the water to try to find what species of DNA were found here, and they didn't find anything that may have indicated there was a Loch Ness Monster, although they did find eel DNA. Now the locals know there are lots of eels here, but maybe there's a giant eel here that they don't know about or think they know about. They've also done sonar scans of this lake, and although they haven't seen anything resembling a Loch Ness Monster, they did find many anomalies. But they found large moving objects underneath the water that they could not explain. It could be that the Loch Ness Monster is a ancient dinosaur called the Plesiosaurus. The Plesiosaurus was a giant aquatic animal, and witness statement accounts tend to indicate the same look as a Plesiosaurus. Let's see if we can find Nessie out here. I'm out here all by myself, a little bit scary, not 
not gonna lie, a little bit scary. This is one of the biggest rivers and deepest rivers in all of the United Kingdom. Water's too murky to see with the naked eye. So Nessie might be a little bit hard to find today. See bubbles here. What are these bubbles doing here? Hey, what are these bubbles doing here on the surface? Um, huh? I don't know, maybe maybe the Loch Ness monster spit. That's the spit of the monster. to the castle. This castle was built in the 1200s. Many different occupants over the years, the English, the Scottish, the English, the Scottish, including Robert the Bruce, who is the King of Scotland. You may recognize that name from the movie Braveheart. He was the king that kind of betrayed William Wallace and rejoined him later. You remember that? This castle is called Urquhart. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right. Urquhart, Urquhart. Urquhart Castle. So maybe Nessie knew that people were watching, so they might hide here. The look through here is kind of hiding, so hopefully Nessie wouldn't see them, and she would just pop her head out, and they would catch a glimpse. This area was a great big dining hall that they had. So the lords would want to show up their wealth and their power, so they would have big banquets here, invite the wealthy elite, and have a feast. It's also a rumor that underneath the castle here, there are two chambers, one containing gold, the other containing the plague but people have been fearful to search for it for fear they may uncover the wrong chamber. Which goes to the old concept of psychology that people fear pain more than they want to pursue pleasure. I wonder how cool it'd be to live in here. It sounds like it'd be cool to like live in an old castle. But at the same time, it's probably very cold, very damp. Imagine we say it'd be cool to live in a castle, but if you ask anybody who lived here, they, they would say, oh, it'd be so cool to live in a house that's running water, heat and electricity. So would you want to live in this castle? Um, perhaps. It depends. If I can have lots of good food um, and activities. What about heating and electricity and lighting? Um, you'll just cuddle me. That's what the castle looked like before. They would store and cook food in this room. Most of the diet at the time was porridge, bread, oat cakes, things like that. They did not eat meat a lot. Meat was considered something only the wealthy could eat or you would have only on special occasion. People should know when they're conquered. Ju Quintus, you would I. People should know when they're conquered. Would you Quintus? Would I? No reference of that to here, but I just thought of it. Why not? So I'm genuinely curious, what do you think? Do you think Nessie the Loch Ness Monster actually exists or not? There's lots of documentation and evidence, uh, more so than you might find with a completely mythical creature like a dragon. So do you think she's real or is she made up? Let me know in the comments below. Got sonar activated. Oh my god, what is this? It's probably land. It's probably land. You even have people like this guy who moved in this area to find Nessie. It was his lifelong ambition. So it's believed that this whole area was a huge glacier that obviously melted over time and it created the Loch Ness area here um, there's this hypothesis that there would have been underwater caves where all these monsters and creatures could hide um, and resurface and that's how people uh, were able to see them so uh, we're going to see if we find any of these descendants of ancient uh, dinosaurs believe it or not in 2005 there was a triathlon where the athletes would actually swim through this river Loch Ness River 
and the insurance company insured 100 of the athletes against attacks from the Loch Ness Monster. They each had a 1 million pound insurance policy if they were proven to be attacked or harmed by the Loch Ness Monster. So when Dustin and I travel, uh, we really try to find tours or experiences uh, that have to do with like local legends and folklore and things like that. Because um, it really just shows you what people believe, um, local, you know, history, and it's fascinating to see how people perceive the world, right? Um, and how we have so much in common with other cultures. Every culture has some type of like monster story or you know some type of mystery that inhabits along with us this world. So that's what we get to discover here in the Loch Ness. Unfortunately, in the few hours we spent out here, we did not see her. People have spent their whole lives looking for her, unable to find her. We didn't see her in the two hours we were here either. But Nessie, we know you're out there. We know you're not a monster like they call you. You're uh, probably a beautiful, loving being, just doing what you can. And maybe the reason you're not revealing yourself is because humanity is not ready for you. Maybe we'd be too scared, we'd be too uh, fearful and we would act in defense rather than really admiring the beauty that you have. So perhaps when humanity has evolved to less fearful state, to more loving and understanding of our balance between us and nature, Nessie shall appear from the depths of the shadows of Earth. Until then, perhaps Nessie, we shall see you in a future life. Take care for now.